Oh man, you gotta love it. The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Hello. Oh, mate. Hello, hi. Hi everybody. It's me, the Humble Gamer. How do you do? It's uh, a fine Tuesday afternoon. Not really, it's raining like fuck outside. Uh, but I'm here at my brother's house again. And before this cutscene goes into the spoilers, let's uh, go to the start menu here. I am with my brother. Hi. Hello, darling. Mental maelstrom here. Yes, he's here. So, uh, it's been <laughs> quite some time. My brother and I did Banjo Tooie back in 2019, and uh, we'd spoken quite a few times about what we would do next time I came up, uh, but even before the coronavirus bullshit happened in th this year. Um, speaking of which, this this whole this is we're going to play Ocarina of Time, okay? We're going to play through the whole game. We're not going to do everything. We're just going to try to sort of beeline for the end, um, but not rush things. So today we'll probably play till about Adult Link, uh, and then uh, I, I'm going to be playing to Adult Link, and then I'm going to pass my brother the control, and he's going to play play the rest of the game. I played Banjo Tooie. He'll play the majority of Ocarina, but uh, he's got a file here already, which is uh, you know he's he's beat the game. So uh, we're gonna do file one, two. one death. Oh, well. one death, and I completed all that. Oh, is that is that what that is? That, yeah. Oh, it's it's the death number. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we'll start file two, and I will also call my character Link because I, d I don't want to mess around with funny names. We're, we're we're taking this a little bit seriously. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna play the whole game, and uh, this whole series of us playing this oh fuck's sake this whole series is going to go out probably at the beginning of 2021 i don't imagine getting around to putting it out until the end of the year at least because i i'm not I, i'm not i'm not going to be having the time so so this this series is uh it's just gonna take its time to get out there but there you go in the vast deep forest of hyrule long have i served as the guardian spirit i am known as the deku tree Oh man, nothing beats this game. Oh, this game nothing. is absolute legend. Um, I spent the past two weeks playing this game in preparation for this. Uh, and I can tell you right now, I reached the Shadow Temple and I didn't get much more time to play. So I have not got past the Shadow Temple in my personal playthrough. But in my personal playthrough, I've done everything in the game. I, I did the Bigoron Sword quest line. Uh, I did the, the Mask quest line. Uh, I did absolutely everything that I could possibly think to do. Uh, also, we might be a little loud in the beginning here because there's no music in the opening cutscene. So there is uh, my bro oh now this sound. Uh, my brother's PC, which we're using to record, does have a fan, which is rather loud. It has um, like five or six fans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we are um, we we did a little bit of testing before recording. If anything needs fiddling with, like we did with Banjo Tooie, then we'll fiddle with it before session two. But for the most part, we've fiddled with it enough, I think. Um, I don't know if this audio here is going to be louder than ours. I mean, I, I've tried to judge things as well as I can, but, you know, sometimes you just don't judge well enough. Um, but but we'll, we'll, we'll see. For the most part, this game's rather quiet, so... Although, coming through the headphones right now, it's very loud. I can barely hear my own thoughts, so... But, uh, but yeah, Ocarina of Time, legendary game. Everybody knows this game. Uh, a lot of people think it's overrated. Uh, I'm one of those people. Uh, I still think it's a fantastic game, um, but it is really, really highly overrated. Um, I think there's a lot of good games out there uh, that definitely stand the test of time next to Ocarina that people barely talk about in comparison to this. But, um, but Ocarina is still fantastic. Uh, and, and having played it the last two weeks, I absolutely can confirm that fact. It, it's been a so fun playing through it again. It's an um, epic game. There's nothing about this game that you can really say is bad, to be honest. Oh god, yeah. This this game is almost flawless. Almost. Um, I mean, you can see that it's t like over 20 years old, like straight. Yeah. Away. I mean, if you want to play a better looking version, you can play the fucking 3D version, which has better looking graphics. But you know. Ocarina of Time is almost timeless in terms of its storytelling, you know, its world building and its storytelling is, is practically timeless. 
I mean, even, you know, 25 years after it, well, when did it come out? Mid 90s or late 90s? Uh, it was 98, I believe. 90, yeah. Okay, so even 22 years after it came out, I still thoroughly enjoyed playing it. In fact, actually, we should probably, during this session, talk about our history with this game if we're going to be playing the whole thing. You know, we'll get a lot of opportunities to talk about various things during this playthrough. Uh, but for, for today, since, you know, we're, we're only doing to Adult Link and I'm not going to be 100%ing everything, so I'll probably get there rather quickly, a few hours maybe. But um, let's talk about our history with Ocarina. So, uh, do I want to start or do I want to let my brother start? My brother's going to have a hell of a story because he played this game back pretty much when it came out. Um, well, I had an N64, like, quite a while before this even came out. So, well, yeah. I'll, you know what I mean? This this was like in magazines all over the place. They were teasing the hell out of this. I had no idea how good it was going to be. And then before I knew it, like, every kid in school had this. So, yeah. You were a fucking idiot if you didn't. Hello! Like, it's... you were the absolute nerd of the entire school if you didn't have Ocarina of Time. Like, honestly, you got so badly mugged off in class if you didn't have a Nintendo 64 in my school. <laughs> honestly. But, yeah. I mean, when I first played this as well, yeah, I didn't even get very far. I'll show you how far I got the <laughs> first time I ever played this. My child brain just did not understand the concept of 3D adventure games at that time. I hadn't really played any 3D titles. I mean, I used to go around my uncle's house and he'd let me play like Tekken 2 on his PlayStation. But, you know, that's like 2D fighting game. Or well, 3D fighting game on a 2D sort of plane. Mm. You know what I mean? It's And then you, it's all of a sudden you've got this, yeah, where you can walk around an entire environment in full 3D. It completely blew my mind. Like, it just straight away I just had to explore like everything. Do you know what's really strange to me is when you get to know a game really well you forget that the game throws hints at you of what to do like for example right here at the beginning you'd think you think you to yourself like now okay I've got to go get the Kokiri sword right but like if you try to think about it you're like okay well how would I know where the Kokiri sword is if I didn't already know but there are characters you can literally talk to that hint to you that, yeah, there's a legendary Kokiri sword hidden somewhere in the forest, you know. Uh, it's it's like, it, it's really sort of blatantly there, but you wouldn't realise it unless you actually, you know, go at this from a blind perspective and talk to everybody you run that into. That and the fact that Navi would never let you fucking get lost in a million years. Oh yeah, Navi, just... the, the legendary fucking, hey, hello, listen, you know, fucking... All that bullshit. I used to have that as a ringtone. Oh, yeah, I remember when you did. Yeah, that was pretty funny. But, like, yeah. She, Hello? She never lets you lose direction. Like, yeah, she no, keeps it, on it can get so really bad. annoying at some points. Like, and, it, like, and it's fucking intrusive sometimes as well. It, like, mm. blacks out the screen. And it, she just starts talking. <laughs> All right, well, first things first, we've got to collect a few rupees so that we can uh, pick up the shield when we're done with the sword best place for rupees is between them platforms there there's yeah an, if you can manage to pull it off there's an invisible blue one between no, no. the middle and the last yeah i can't oh fuck's sake how there we go is yeah. there one back this way no. or am i dreaming oh well it's always that last one there's some in these rocks too oh and there's the guy that humps the rocks look Oh, he seems to be enjoying that rock quite oh, a lot. Oh, he's having a real good time. Oh, also there's chests in here too. So you can uh, you can get some rupees in here for easy, for cheap. And then when you go back out now as well, do that fucking the ledge rocks. thing again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need 30 or 40 rupees. No, that, that same blue rupee you got between the ledges just then. Oh, it's back oh again. right. Oh, that's not bad. I've gotten two blue rupees in here. And a heart. I have a heart! I have yeah. obtained heart. Like I didn't have one before. 
Um, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's try this again. There we go. That's 26. Uh, there's a blue rupee up there, so we'll go pick up that one too, I guess, and we'll be up to 31. Most of the rest of it is just where the sword is, like. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Just go and get the sword and there's all fucking rupees in it. Oh, man, this is, like, this this game really gets you in the mood, like, right from the get-go. It really does. Like, you, you walk out and you're in Kokiri Forest, and it's this small little area to get you introduced to some very basic elements of this game, like talking to NPCs, you know, collecting rupees and things. I'm not going to talk to you because you'll just tell me how to use the camera. There's one around the back of that house as well. Is there? Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. There's something new I learned today. Yeah, 36. All right, now let's go get the Kokiri sword, shall this, we? This dude knows way too much about this game. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, fuck off. I didn't want to talk to you. Oh, a fairy finally came to you. Now you have a lot to learn. Yeah, and then... She Fucking yeah, talking shut up. down to me, bitch. I will slap you. Like I haven't played this game a million I times. I have no before. sword in my hand, but I will slap you. I will. I will have you for dinner. I will have your lunch. Yeah, mate. Yes. <laughs> I will have your lunch. I will have your lunch. Well, let me talk about my uh, introduction to this game. So, as with most games on the N64, it was Aaron here who introduced me to uh, to Ocarina. Uh, Alright, which way am I going? Alright, blue rupee over here. There we go. We have enough for the shield now. Uh, it was Aaron who introduced me, so if it wasn't for him, I would know nothing of the N64 or its games, really. Um, you still I used to know nothing. <laughs> Shut up. I used to sit with him and, and watch him play these games all the time. As, as a kid, um, I have very vivid memories of... Uh, Sitting in his room, watching him play Ocarina, Banjo, Donkey Kong 64. Uh, like, the, lots of the N64 games, pretty much my introduction to them was just watching my brother play them. And it took me a really, really long time before I even started to play games myself. Like, pick up a controller and play games myself on any console. By the time I actually got to play Ocarina the first time myself, I was, I was like 11 years old. So, oh, I have to equip the sword. Yeah, that's right. Um, yay, Kokiri sword! Um, and the funny thing about the Kokiri sword is, if you read this sign, uh, no, we don't slash it, we read it. It says, visit the house of the know-it-all brothers to get answers to all your item-related questions. Oh, okay. It, it's supposed to say that this is the Kokiri sword. Remember to bring it back. Um, or maybe it's Navi that says it. The Great Deep... No, no, she's just reminding me about the DQ tree. Okay. In Fair other enough. words, hurry the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't... Give me a break, bitch. I'm working here. Hey, hurry the fuck up. Heil! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is uh, a bright Nazi sometimes. Oh, Jesus. Well, yeah, so, uh... So, the first time I played this game, just like Aaron, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um... I mean, like, I, I remembered from watching Aaron play, like, some stuff that you could do, but I, I wasn't, like, 100%. So, like, in the first area here, I got the Kokiri sword, um, but, like, uh, when I got into the dungeon, the Deku Tree dungeon, I struggled to get through it, and then, like, I, I, I beat Goma, and uh, and I left and got out into Hyrule Field, and I think I got all the way up to uh, uh, the, the castle and Zelda's cutscene, uh, and then I just sort of stopped. I think that's where I stopped the first time I played. And, uh, and then I didn't carry on, I don't think. And it took me a few years before I picked it up and carried on playing it again. Uh, Alright, it's where this the shop fuck here. Where are you going? Yeah, there's only one shop. Oh, yeah, this bitch. Hi, Link. Look this way. Look over here with Z and target to, uh, talk to me with A. Yes, target me with Z and talk to me with A. Yeah, just This bitch will not let you go in this shop unless you talk to her, by the way. Waste my sweet fucking time. She, she will literally, if you if you exit this, this talk before doing this target thing, she will stop you and stop you from going in the shop until you do it. It's very annoying. Um, anyway, yeah, let's skip all that because we don't need to know any of that. I've already played this game before. Two weeks ago, in fact. Uh, quicker than that. Alright. Shield. 40 rupees. Buy. Done. There we go. Shield has been got. Now we can go to the Great Deku Tree. 
Awesome. I was watching the off-camera secrets of uh, Ocarina the other day. Ah. Uh... And that little midget guy there, yeah, is the only shopkeeper in the whole game that has legs. Like, uh. all the others have no legs. They uh. all look like Casper the Friendly Ghost, like, floating behind the desk. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay. I don't know what the settings on Elgato were, you know, for uh, for the rendering. Whether it's going to render with commentary separate or not. I don't know. Um, I imagine we'll find out. Oh, uh, it's bound to happen. Hey you, Mr. No Fairy, what's your business with the great DQ tree? So this is Fido. He's a cunt. Uh, he doesn't like you very much, and uh, he, he does not approve of you being liked by the Deku Tree. Uh, and he, at some point he thinks you killed the Deku Tree, but it never comes up again in the whole game, so it's kind of pointless. But he has to stop you before you can go anywhere, so, you know, we're kind of stuck here in this position until he finishes his, his bullshit explanation of, I don't like you! Oh, and by the way, it's Mido. Oh, not Fido. Not Fido. He might as well be a Fido, he's basically a bitch. He is. He acts like a bully, yeah, but he's so blatantly jealous. Yeah, I know. It's like, how the fuck do you be both? How the fuck are you, like, coming down on Link? I didn't equip my shield. Like, mission one of the game and you fucked it already. Uh, it's fine. You have no hope of beating Ganondorf. No the hope. Oh, trust me, mate. I know what I'm doing. I do. I do. Yeah, I know. You just proved it. Uh, well, <laughs> this game is something else, man. I, I, I thoroughly love this game to bits. Um, it, it's, it's like, I, I wanted to put it on my channel for a long time, right? And for the longest time, the only thing I even had was uh, the live stream that I did back in 2014 on Twitch. Um, and that was back when I still had all of that footage on my person. So I had those live streams all downloaded and saved from my Twitch account before uh, Twitch started deleting people's VODs. Um, and I, I, uh, I kept it for years and then like realized I still had it. So I, I went ahead and went through it and turned it into a video um, of just sort of the best parts or what I thought were the best parts. Uh, ah, right, of course. We need Deku sticks. Um, and, and it turned out alright, I suppose. It wasn't terrible. Um, I it, mean, it, it was alright. It, it, it could have been better, but then, you know, it was 2014. And that's basically the last time I played um, uh, Ocarina of Time as well, I think, was 2014. Until it was this possible. Year. Yeah. Well, I only got to, like, the end of the Deku Tree, and then I stopped. But I did carry on playing. There is footage of me playing all the way up to, uh, to the Zelda cutscene. Um, but I was on my own and I wasn't talking very much, so I, I just left that and let it fall to the wayside. I kept all the bits up until I beat the Deku Tree, because up until I got to the Deku Tree I had co-commenters with me, and we were having a good laugh. And then when I got inside the Deku Tree they all disconnected and, and went on their day, did go and going about their business. So I was left to commentate on my own. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, I wanted to do a playthrough of this game, I just didn't have the time for it. I mean, I did Banjo-Kazooie and Tui before I lost the ability to record anything but PS4. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I just, I thought about it for a long time. And I could have done this when I, when I, uh, wait, yeah, of course. Um, I could have done this instead of Banjo-Tooie when I came to, to here last time, but I just didn't bother. I, I, I thought, I thought, you know, Aaron's never seen the rest of Banjo-Tooie past Witchy World, so I don't know, I'll play Banjo-Tooie for him. Um, I wasn't really thinking about Ocarina at the time. It wasn't really in my mind. Uh, the music in this game really gets you hyped and ready to go. Yeah, for no. an N64 cartridge, the sound work on this game is fucking epic. Like, Oh god, yeah, for sure. I mean, just that right there. As soon as it says inside the great Deku tree, just that fucking music. It's a low you. pitched sort of hum. Right? This right here, this room, this is the furthest I got when I first played Ocarina. 
that hole in the middle of the floor, I did not know how to go through there. <laughs> I uh. had no fucking idea. I had to go to school and ask one of the kids how it was done. Uh, that is... That the, is real shit. The way it was done back in the fucking late 90s, you go and ask a kid at school how to do it. No just hopping on Google, nothing like that. No, you either had to ask one of your mates or call one of them cheat hotlines. <laughs> oh, man. I, I just wanted to say this, right? You know how you talked about the music design? Mm. Can you hear the low-pitched drumming? Yeah, that's the combat music. But the way it's done is it blends in really well with whatever the dungeon music is. And then as you get closer to combat, if we sneak towards it, it's louder and louder oh, and no. more intense. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it's fucking like amazing. the sound design is, is incredible. Uh, also, I'm not going to mess with these guys because they aren't going to give me DQ sticks and I want DQ sticks. Especially like... Uh, the sound design on the bosses as well. Yeah, yeah. The boss music is fantastic in this game. Um, it, it, it's so intense too. I love the introduction to the bosses as well with their titles coming up on screen and everything. Yeah. It's so fucking good. Also, I, I just want to make a note, right? I have been waiting to get away from fucking London for so long. After this shit of a, like this this shithole of a year, right? 2020 has been a fucking shit year. And it's so nice to just leave London and, and come to my brothers and just chill here, play some video games, you know, just just have a fucking good laugh and, and a good time. And, uh, and, and I knew, like, from the moment I left my brothers last time that we were going to do something next time I came up. I just knew it. I was like, we did Banjo-Tooie. We've got to find something else to do next time I come up, another big project. And we just thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And we had a few ideas of games to play. But, man, it just ended up, when it came down to the wire, it had to be Ocarina. I love this game. My brother loves this game. It's pretty fucking quick to beat. Like, Banjo-Tooie took us four sessions. This is probably going to take us four sessions. But the fourth will probably end up only being an hour. Because, all things considered, if I get to adult stage today, then uh, tomorrow we'll probably get, like, two temples done. The, uh, the Water and Fire Temple. The next day we'll do um, the Shadow and the Spirit Temple. And then uh, the day after that, we'll, we'll probably just end up um, doing Ganon's Castle. All right, of course, after. After. Oh no! I'm like, what the hell are you doing? So well, I'm talking. I can't think and talk at the same time. Deku's from. Come back here! Don't chase him. Just stop on his leaf, and he comes back to you. Forgive me, master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? Two, three, one. No, this this ain't the guy. <laughs> when you jump off a high cliff. If you hold forward, you will roll on the ground when you land and won't get hurt from the fall. Except sometimes that doesn't happen and you just land fine. Like when you're an adult, in the well, and I'm you fall down. I never forgot that clue for the rest of my life. Yeah. 23 is number one. Can it, can it work? I thought you meant the rolling clue. I was going to say, can you do it in real life though? Can you, can you jump off a building in real life and save yourself by just rolling when you hit the ground <laughs> like uh, i want to test it but i also don't want to die <laughs> so cue clip of robbie testing this theory oh jesus christ so i, I when i was watching uh I, I watched through nintendo capri sun's playthrough of this game uh up until the shadow temple um and and he he in his playthrough which is from 2009 by the way he showed a cheap trick here, which I completely forgot about, which is um, instead of wasting time shooting the ladder, if you just jump down and climb the vines to get up here, you can use the platform to jump back instead, so you don't have to waste time shooting the ladder. Uh, it's, it's such a dumb fucking time saver. It saves like five seconds. It's so stupid, but I thought I'd do it anyway. So you have to shoot the ladder up there, but you can just do that instead. <laughs> nice and easy. No. Doesn't mean a thing. Now the ledge is gone. Forever. Forever. Rip ledge. The ledge is dead. The, the way this uh, this dungeon is designed is really good too, because like, the, the thing is, it's trial and error, isn't it, right? You didn't know how to get through that hole, but as a kid, I guess you just weren't like smart enough to just come up here anyway and see what was no, up I here. Just, I had no concept of 3D open world gaming, like 3D adventure. 
nothing. I think, like, like I say, the only things I played in 3D up to that point was Tekken 2 and Soul Blade. And they got absolutely nothing to do with adventure. Just absolutely no concept of any game like this at all. There was, mm. like, th this sort of thing was new. Like, nobody had experienced anything like this until Mario 64 came out. I mean, that being the release title. So that was everyone's proper first experience with, like, a fully 3D Yeah, sometimes I forget adventure. it was Nintendo who pioneered 3D platforming. Like, it, th they were the first company to release a truly 3D platformer, and it was Mario 64, which e explains a lot about why Mario 64 is such a beloved game. It was most people's first experiences with a 3D platformer, so of course it has a huge fucking fan base, you know, and I like Mario 64. It's fucking hard in some places, but it's a damn good game. Yeah, there's no need for how hard that uh, game is. Right, ah, of course. We can get Deku stick here and... No, that's it. just for getting out. Oh, well, we'll put them on there anyway.